Okay, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Okay, stop. Okay, band is open. Welcome back and thank you for helping us with our annual bird census. And if you forgot what a census is, we're talking about a bird count. We want to know how many different kind of birds are out there. And we want to know is that, are, is the bird population increasing, decreasing, staying the same? And the reason we ask that question is birds are the messengers. They tell us how healthy that world is out there that we all live in. Birds need the same air to breathe that we do. They drink, need clean water like we do. They need clean places to live. So if we take the time to watch and listen and count them and look at that data over the years, we can get a sense of how healthy our world is. So that's the main reason. If you wondered why we're doing it, I guess I could throw this other reason in. It's just plain fun to do this. If, you, if you've not gone on a birding walk, um, this is fun. And just to give you an idea of how, how uh, lucky you guys are today, just yesterday with that kind of not so good weather, we saw 63 different kind of birds yesterday alone. And because of the cooler weather and the rain, the birds have been kind of hanging in there. Instead of flying north, migrating like they normally would, um, they're resting and feeding. And, and so with this kind of weather, your chances of seeing them are much better. So we'll do basically two things. Walk around, count, list, listen for every bird we can hear. Somebody will be recording it on a clipboard. And secondly, we do something called bird banding which gives a researcher a lot of information about the life of birds. And we have a special person who will do that with you. His name is Alan, and you'll be meeting him in just a few minutes. And I've heard that we've already got birds ready to go to, that need to be banded. So we ask the, that since you're working around live birds, please use low voices. We don't want to stress the birds out. And once the banding uh, is done and the data has been collected from the bird, um, some of you will be chosen to release the bird. And um, we'll get that bird on its way as quickly as we can. All right, so we're gonna start off with one group at the banding area. The other group will start walking the trails, checking nets. We have about 10 or 12 nets set up around the property where we may catch birds, but even if we don't, we're listening and watching for every bird in between that we can see. So um, it doesn't matter to us which class goes to the banding area first. Everybody will get a chance to see birds up close today. It's a good day. We saw lots of birds, but it was so chilly and cold, we couldn't open our nets, so we couldn't really catch birds out in the in the property as much we just stayed close to the nature center here and we caught a bunch of birds anyway coming into the feeders but um, there were birds all over the place yesterday and uh, I printed a weather map for the group yesterday and you guys have probably looked at weather maps online maybe or you see it on TV this is not in color but this dark gray line across southern Michigan is rain and what that did the night the, the night before last was the night migrating birds ran into the rain and you can't migrate in the rain very well. It's not very comfortable and you know you get wet and you get cold. So they drop down into wherever they're at and bird watchers call that a fallout. So we had a fallout yesterday. We had hundreds of birds everywhere yesterday. And they were in the tops of the trees and they were on the ground and they were desperately looking for bugs. And it was 40 degrees and the wind chill was 34 and it was just very unpleasant, but lots and lots of birds. Fortunately, some of those birds are still here today because these birds use the Eel Johnson Nature Center as a stopover location in their migration. So these uh, little patches, especially in a big residential area with shopping malls and houses and freeways and everything, an area like this is very important for migrating birds. It's like a gas station. You only got, can go so far in a tank of gas and you need more gas. So birds eat bugs for gas, a lot of them, and seeds and fruit. And so for that, they need a habitat like this. So 
Um, it might not be a very big nature center, but it can be very important if a bird uh, is needing to get fueled up right now. So um, I have been a bird, uh, bird bander since I was, I don't know how old. I've been a bird bander for like 25 or 30 years now. And in order to become a bird bander, you have to apprentice under another bird bander. And I apprenticed under the person who did this program before, before I did. I've been doing it 14 years now here. So this is a 28 year project so far. So is that a long term or short term study? Long term. So do you think we get better data from long term or short term stuff? Long term. Long term, yes. Long term trends are always better than short term because today it might be cold and tomorrow it might be warm and that doesn't make any difference in the big long scheme of things in the lifetime of a bird one day and the next day. So uh, I have a federal license uh, to ban birds and I had to be trained and I also uh, have a state license. Um, sorry, I'm distracted. It's like over at the feeders. Looks like a squirrel is chasing a grackle or something. <laughs> but there's some noise going on over there. Maybe we've caught a bird. Sometimes the birds kind of make noise when another bird is caught. They don't really help him, they just yell at him. Like, you dummy, what'd you do? <laughs> so, bird banders, we put aluminum bands on the bird's legs, okay? And each band has a unique number on it. So no, other, no bird has the same number. It's kind of like you guys, you probably don't even know, but uh, because you got it when you were born, back in the last century, we didn't get them when we were born. We got a social security card. You guys got a social security number. So that's a unique number that identifies you. So on these bands is a unique number just like that. And when I put it on the bird, it'll be on the bird for the rest of its life. If somebody finds it, uh, catches it somewhere else or, or finds it somewhere, um, you can go online and report that you found it. Just have, make sure you have all nine digits on the band, where you found the bird and um, when you found the bird. You don't even have to know what it is. There was a bird, uh, this is a little bit gross, but at a metro park where I was working, uh, they were doing a beach cleanup and somebody found the leg of a bird with a band on it Ew. and it had died and everything else was gone, but just the one leg it had a band on it and they reported it. And I, you know, I figured out what it was and when it was. So there was no way to figure out what kind of bird that was. So, so if you do, you get a certificate back from the bird banding lab, thanking you for helping out with the scientific project and uh, what they send me is they send me a PDF file. It's not, not very much of a certificate, but um, this is one from the E.L. Johnson Nature Center uh, of a bird called an American Red Start that I banded here on May 16th in 2012 that was recaptured by another bird bander in Aurora, Ontario on September 12th, 2013. So Aurora, Ontario is 215 miles, that's 346 kilometers, east-northeast of here. So this was a migrating warbler. They don't nest here. These are all warblers. And the American Red Start is this black and orange one here. The females are green and yellow. And so that told us a couple of things. That bird survived at least a year and it told us where it was migrating to and from. So we've got a point A and a point B. So um, we have a couple more of these, uh, but this is the longest distance one from the E.L. Johnson Nature Center. Um, we had a blue jay a couple of years ago that somebody found, it hit their window up that way about half a mile. And last year somebody found, or this spring, somebody found a Cooper's Hawk that we banded here last year and it had a window over that way. So windows are not friendly to birds very what's often. With, what's with hitting what's windows? Kind of blue jay hit my window? They don't know that they see the sky in the window and they think they're flying into the sky or they see the reflection of trees and they think they're they're landing in trees. So there you can put decals on your windows to kind of break up the reflection and prevent them from hitting the windows. Yeah. So so I'm gonna pass these bands around let you guys have a look at them. This rubber band is on here to keep them from falling off. So Please don't uh, take them off of there uh, and just have a look at them. Just pass them around. I'm going to start banding some of these birds because it's a little bit chilly today, but we're doing the scientific project. Um, so we're going to collect data, okay? 
and we are sampling the birds here with, with nets and traps for the bird banding. We're also, other half of your group is out observing. So we've already started a bird list uh, over here for this morning. And over the next week and a half, two weeks, we're going to compile all these results. And we have two different ways of, of uh, censusing the birds in the nature center. Um, the nets go up about eight feet. You think there's some birds that live higher than eight feet off the ground? Yeah. Lots, of, so we don't catch any of those. So it's good to have a couple different ways to, to track them. We don't catch swallows. We don't catch ducks very often. Uh, we don't catch hawks very often. So it's, it's good to have uh, different ways. So there's certain sparrows that are really hard to see, but we catch them in the net. So it's, it's a way of finding the difficult ones to, to see. Uh, so the data that I'm going to collect, I have the band numbers. I'm going to put in my notebook here, uh, the date and location. What species are we banding? Uh, I have to determine the age and the sex, and then I measure their wing and their tail. I look at how much fat they have, and then I have a scale over here, and I weigh the birds, and then we release them. So every bird, I have to collect all of this data, um, and it tells us something about how healthy they are and, and, and so forth. So um, I'm going to go for first bird here. We have different sizes of bands. Why do you think there are different sizes of bands? Different big birds. Different size bird, different different size legs. The band's going on the leg, so sometimes a bird this big and a bird this big say, take the same size band because their legs are the same size. So the first band I'm going to put on this bird is this one right here. So that's not as big as the ones that I'm passing around. The ones I'm passing around, some of you guys know what a morning dove is? Yeah. It's the, the dove that uh, at your feeders with the long pointy tail. So that's the size a morning dove takes is that one I'm passing around. This is a lot smaller. That's a size 3B. This is a size 0. And this is not the smallest band. This is like six times bigger than a hummingbird band. So it's a little bird, but it's not the littlest one. So who wants, who has a good loud voice? And can you read the number to everybody? You might want to take your gloves off. So there's nine numbers on there. There's four on the top and five on the bottom. And you start where the crack is in it. And I'll verify the number when you read it. Do you go a long way or do you go down, up and down long ways, right? Or left or right? Um, left yeah. to right, oh, the top yeah. row, and then the bottom row. Two, And then eight. one second, sorry, pencil. Lost my pencil. Got my pencil, got it. OK, go. Two. Two, eight. eight. Seven. Seven. Zero. Zero. Uh, five. Five. Zero. 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 And then that's it. The last scene. Uh, there should be five numbers on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. And then the rest are just zeros. Okay. Start over on the bottom. See where the crack is? Yeah. And, okay. Five. Yep. Which yeah. Is it zero yeah. five? Is it yeah. zero? Yeah, I started five. right. Five, zero, 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 zero. Yes. Sorry, I was on the wrong page. That's why I was having trouble figuring that out. Okay, thank you. Okay, today's date is May 8th. E.L. Johnson. So I've got to get this band on a bird's leg. So how do you think I'm going to do that? Got to open it up with a, plier. with a pair of pliers, a special pair of pliers that they make for bird banders. It has a little pin on the top, and then just put it on the pin and just pull it apart. Oh, because I was thinking that. Okay. So now it's ready to go, and I just close the band around the bird's leg, and it's not going to fit real tight like a wristwatch. It's going to fit loose like a bracelet, so it's not going to cut off their circulation or anything. But I've got the band ready. I put the band on first. 
first thing, because I know what bird that is. So that's the piece of data that I have. I know what kind of bird it is. If I put the band on and I drop it and it flies away, at least I have that piece of data. If I collected all the data and took all these measurements and then let it go and forgot to put the band on it, then I just have to erase everything I just wrote because that bird's gone and we wasted that bird's time. So we're holding these birds in these bags so they stay kind of quiet and still. And you guys have been really good so far. One of my main jobs as a bird bander is to make sure that birds do not stress out too much, that we handle them in a safe and respectful way. And so staying still and staying quiet is what you can do to help me do that, okay? So I'm trained to, to keep an eye on these birds. And so when this bird comes out, it's gonna see all of you staring at it and it's gonna get a little bit nervous that maybe you're a bunch of predators all of a sudden. So I'm gonna hold it so that I won't drop it, I hope. I hardly ever drop any. Um, and then I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you what it is and I'll explain what I'm doing as I go, okay? Um, any, qu yeah, just one question before I start. We, we need to get the birds going. Do go they ahead. have food and water in there? Do they have food and water in here? No, they just have quiet and darkness and peace. <laughs> so we hold them still. There are, some of them are wiggling around, but we only caught these birds about 10 minutes ago and we go around the other group is going to check the nets and get some other birds and then when you guys leave you're going to check the nets again and get some more birds so we don't leave the nets open and just not check them we have to check them on a regular basis especially when it's cold um, we don't want the birds in the net too long so i'm going to take this bird out and i know you guys are going to get excited but if you can keep your your volume level down and mo the motions motions kind of distract the birds and make them stress. So if you can stay still and quiet, that would be excellent. There's a certain way that bird banders hold on to a bird that's safe and keeps them still. It's called the banders grip. And I'll tell you what this bird is in a minute. But we just put the band on the bird's leg close the pliers and this bird is banded. It's got a shiny new bracelet <laughs> and won't come off of there. So I already knew what this bird was before I put a band on it but when you're out identifying birds you're looking at different field marks and you're going to be doing that later. Um, one thing that's to look at to start is what kind of a beak does it have. A beak will tell you what it does for a living. A hawk has a, a big hooked beak. What does it do for a living? Oh, it eats meat. Yeah. A duck has a flat beak. It kind of eats the vegetation off the water. Some birds eat bugs. And they have uh, tweezer-like little beaks to grab them out of the air. This particular bird has a slightly curved beak. It, it pokes under bark and grabs bugs and insect eggs under there. Next thing to look at is the size of the bird. Is it a big bird, small bird? Small. Okay. And then the last thing you look at is uh, the colors and patterns. Black and white bear. It's black and white. That's a good description. And if you look at if you look at more details, it's got a white line over the eye. It's got a black throat. It's got a white stripe down the middle of the head. It's got black stripes on the side. It's got a white bar on the wing. So all these kinds of things are the ways to describe feel marks of what it has. Birds that are small like this with thin beaks and they're usually fairly colorful. This one is black and white, but it's still a pretty nice looking bird. Uh, it's not red or yellow or blue, but is in the uh, warbler family. And the poster back here that I pointed to before, these are all the warblers that have occurred in Michigan and almost all of these have occurred here at the Nature Center over the years. So this is a warbler that's up on this poster and this is a, this shows a female it's got a white throat this one's got a black throat so this is a male and amazingly enough this one is called a black and white warbler. Lots of birds don't have names that make sense but this one does. And uh, so I know this is a black and white warbler. It's a male. 
because it has a black throat. Females have white throats, and I know that just by studying. And how old is this bird? We don't know how old birds are in the number of years unless we put a band on it. So the timing starts now for this bird, the band is on it, but we just decide, determined the age classification at this point. Just like we have two ages of humans here right now, we have adults and we have kids, we do the same thing with birds. So birds nest in the summertime so there aren't any kids around, right? Once they reach one year old, most birds are old enough to nest on their own, and so they're considered adults. So this is an adult male. Some birds I can be a little more specific. Because this bird's throat is not completely black, it's got a little white spots in it. I know that this bird is probably hatched last summer. So it's in its second calendar year. All birds get a birthday on January 1st. So when you're at home and celebrating New Year's Day, just remember all the birds are having a birthday today too. So they turn from their first year to their second year or older. So this is a second year male black and white warbler. So I'll write that in my notebook. And then I take some measurements I measure how long the wing is and how long the tail is. Its wing is 67, and its tail is 51. So what unit of measure am I using? We always use metric when we're doing science. Centimeters is close. Millimeters, yes. When these birds migrate at night, they put on body fat because they are flying all night long. No place to eat, it's dark. They're up 3,000 feet, there's no food up there. So they have to fatten up for a long migration. And so I look under the feathers and up in this area of the neck, the muscles are red and the fat is yellow, just like on your chicken that you're gonna have for dinner tonight. And I can see that it does have some fat. So I give it a score of zero to seven, he has a one. So he has a little bit of fat. So he might have flown all night long or might have been flying two nights in a row and his fat is a little bit low. Black and white warblers nest in southern Michigan and up into Canada. So he might be almost all the way as far as he's gonna go or he might have a few hundred miles to go. So I'm gonna weigh him on the scale, this bag I put on the scale and I zero the scale, so I'm not weighing the bag, I'm just weighing the bird. I'm gonna wrap him up like a little burrito. And he weighs 10.4. So what's a metric unit of weight? Kilograms is a metric unit of weight, but that's a little big. But what's smaller than a, uh, lighter than a kilogram? Grams, yes. He weighs 10.1 grams. So when I was in school, they tried to convert the whole country to the metric system, which I thought was an awesome idea. But the problem was that everybody wanted to convert. If you're using metric, you don't care. You just know what the metric is. The conversion process messed us up. But in the process, I learned all these conversions. So there's 28 grams in an ounce. And this bird weighs 10 grams. So it's half an ounce, less than half an ounce. So like, what is it? What's the math? It would take 12 black and white warblers to, to weigh as much as your quarter pounder with cheese. So very, very light bird. Feathers don't weigh anything. They have really small bones. Have you guys studied birds a little bit? Do you know something else about bird bones that's an adaptation to flying? Yeah, they, the bird bones are hollow. Bird right? bones are hollow, yep. But they're still very strong because they have like little struts in the middle to, to, to solidify them. So this bird is gonna be ready to go soon. I'm gonna walk around and let you guys touch it on the back one time each and I'll just walk around and let you do that. He's gonna 
try to bite me, it doesn't hurt at all. He might flap his wings, don't get nervous and don't move around a lot. I won't drop him. Oh, that's nice. Fluffy keeps him warm when it's cold because he doesn't have a coat. All he's got is feathers. <laughs> Not really. Uh, black and white warblers spend the winter in Central America and in the West Indies and then they nest up in northern Canada. So it can get down like the temperature it is now in July, in the morning. So they're not as adapted for cold as much as some other birds that do spend a lot of time in the winter. But feathers are warm, they keep you warm. And feathers help keep them dry too. You know, feathers are waterproof mostly, but if it's a real torrential rain, they can still get their feathers kind of soaked. That rock, that rock just went back to me. Okay. Okay, so this bird is about ready to go. Did you have a question before we... Uh, yeah. Oh, this here? Yeah. No, this is just from this week. Um, I, ha I just keep my notebook and I put new pages in. I've got... Big thing. It's, your cam it's his camel pack. That's my water. It's easier for me to drink it that way than to have a bottle because I'm clumsy and I dump bottles of water over all the time. So this is just a hose. So this bird is ready to go. I need a volunteer to help me release it. I think we need a girl. How about you? Okay, so you're gonna hold him the same way that I am. I just have my fingers on each side of its neck very gently. I'm not squeezing or anything. And you see I've got my other fingers underneath so he can grab with his feet. And you can just put it on your hand. Oh, you have a good. Just put your two fingers underneath mine. <laughs> yep, a little farther. Okay, and put your other fingers around. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> good job. <laughs> That's a good question. What if we catch him again in the net? Well, if we catch him again today, we just look up his number and put times two in the note. If we catch him again tomorrow, uh, we write uh, all the data, the number down, and we weigh him again. Because he's a migrating bird, he doesn't live here. So if he gains one gram between today and tomorrow, what does that tell us? He eats. He eats. <laughs> And that means that there's stuff here to eat. That means this habitat is good. This restaurant gets a four-star rating in the bird world. No, five. Five stars? Okay. <laughs> you must you must have had the better caterpillars than, than I had. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. So that's something that we study when we, we catch them again, even if we might never see this bird after it goes up to the nesting season, if it's still here as a migrant, we can learn about the habitat quality. So generally bigger habitats have more food sources than smaller ones, but in an area like southeastern Michigan, these habitats, 35 acres is, is definitely worth keeping and worth saving. So next bird coming right up. Well, I have them on here in order that we caught them. so. Um, we prioritize them. There's nobody gets cuts in line, right? Okay. So I'm going to put a band on him. 
This one takes a size 1A. Can we read the number to you? Is that one smaller than the last one? This is bigger than the last one. So I'm going to go ahead and read this band because we, we want to see more birds. And so it's faster if I just read it. It's 2731. 36746. And it's May 8th. E.L. Johnson. I'll let you guys in the back see how the band comes open. You guys in the front saw this last time. Just pull it open. So all the warblers are about the same size. Is this the same size as the last one? No. It's a lot bigger. So this is maybe a medium-sized bird. It's got a sharp beak. What, what other feel marks do you see? It, you said it's yellow. It does have some yellow on it. Black strokes. It seems like a female. It looks like it's the middle of its, like, of its tail. Tail feathers. It's like brown. Okay, you said white stripes. You said somebody said it looks like a female. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Why? Why'd you say that? I looked at the eyes. You look at the eyes. You can tell a female by looking in the eyes. Okay. He's biting you. Usually, you can tell males and females in some birds by how brightly colored they are. So you guys know, like cardinals are males are red, the females are brown. So this is pretty bright. But maybe the male of this one is even brighter. So looking at these field marks, when we look in our book, we would see that this is a female Baltimore Oriole. Oh. So the males are bright orange and black, and maybe you've seen them before. Maybe you've heard of them before, not just the baseball team. But this is a female Baltimore Oriole, and they spend the winter in Mexico and the Caribbean and they, they nest around in this part of Michigan. And most of these arrived in the last week. And this is the first one we've caught. A lot of Baltimore Orioles don't have any black on the throat, but some of the older ones do. So this bird is maybe not from last year. It's probably older than that. Based on some other things I'm looking at, the details of the feathers, I think she is at least two years old. So she's after her second calendar year. And she's a female. And her wing is 74. And her tail is 70. Let's see if she has any body fat. Nope. She might decide to live here this summer, but she might be going through, we don't know. When you come to the nature center on your own with your parents, you can look out the window at the feeders here, and there are birds that uh, show up at the feeders that have bands on them. Most of them are birds that live here all year round, like chickadees and uh, nuthatches, but sometimes the red-winged blackbirds you can see bands on them, and they migrate here and leave for the winter. So this bird weighs 31.9. So that's a little bit more than an ounce. So Orioles have really good gripping feet. And the females are really good nest builders. 
Baltimore Orioles build a nest that hangs down from a branch. It's like a, uh, a basket. So they're expert weavers. And they take a long time and they build these nests, but in order to build a nest, they have to hang on the branch upside down. So if you're hanging on a branch upside down, you're gonna need <coughs> strong toes and good grip, right? And we caught her near our hummingbird feeders out there because they also feed on nectar as well as insects. So sometimes they'll go up into the tops of the trees and you guys, some of you guys have allergies. You already know that the trees are, have, have flowers on them already. Those who don't, don't realize that in April, trees are flowering, but these Orioles go up there and, and they, they smash those flowers and drink the nectar out of it. And then when the bugs come out, they eat the bugs too. So we're gonna have to let this bird go soon too. I think we need a volunteer to help. We need a boy this time. Perfect. Anytime you're ready, just open up this hand. She'll fly away. Oh, good job. Good. So it has a blue clip on it. That means we caught it in the potter trap. Okay, I have to keep track of what kinds of places we catch them in. Lost my pliers in my pocket. Band on there, hold the leg still. Okay, give me your foot. Give me your foot. Give me your foot. He's like, I don't want to give you my foot. Oh, he's big wings. Okay, so do we see? The beak is similar to the, the Oriole. So if you if you don't know what species it is, you probably don't know if it's a male or female yet, right? So species is first thing. So is this like a bright, boldly patterned bird, colorful, or is it more dull and so that does tell you maybe it is a female of something? The male is very different from this bird, so it's hard to tell. A lot of bird watchers when they're first starting out think it might it looks like a sparrow. Sparrows are kind of streaky and brown. And sparrows are just a little bit bigger than a warbler. So this is a, like a really big sparrow. So it's not a sparrow. Um, how, how old are, are the birds with eggs? until they die? It depends on what kind of bird it is. If you go on Google and you Google bird banding lab and you go onto that website and you can dig around a little bit, there's a page that tells you the records for how long every bird lived. So if you want to look up yellow warbler or American goldfinch or red-winged blackbird, it'll tell you. Usually the smaller birds don't live as long and the bigger birds live longer. There's an albatross that's 60 some years old based on a banding. And hummingbirds, surprisingly, I have, I banned hummingbirds. I'm the only one in Michigan with a license. The oldest hummingbirds I've had have been nine years old, but the average is four. So red-winged blackbirds, these guys might live about 15 years, but this is a female red-winged blackbird. Wow. And she has just a little bit on her shoulders. The male has bright red shoulder patches that he displays to the females. Some females don't have any of that. Based on some characteristics of the feathers, I'm seeing some contrast here. I think she's older. She's at least two years old. She's an after second year female red-winged blackbird. And her wing is 97. And her tail is 73. check her for body fat. She doesn't have any. 
I don't usually see body fat on red-winged blackbirds because a lot of times they migrate during the daytime. Most of these small birds migrate at night to avoid predators and they're up really high, but uh, some birds like um, goldfinches and blue jays and red-winged blackbirds, they migrate during the day. So they don't need all that fuel to fly constantly because if they get hungry, just land. You can, you can see where you're going, it's daytime. Like, okay, oh, there's a, there's a restaurant over there. You want an E.L. Johnson or you want Telegraph Road? <laughs> it weighs 42.5. So red winged blackbirds have strong feet too. <laughs> Orioles and blackbirds are in the same family. And female red winged blackbirds also weave a nest, but it's more of a cup shaped nest. Um, there's one on the property that maybe you guys are going to walk past and have a good look at. So just imagine weaving a basket using just your mouth, just your beak. And red-winged blackbirds like to live in marshes, and so they'll perch on cattails. So cattail is like a skinny stem, and you have to hold on sideways. That's really hard to do. So their feet are really strong. So this is one of the commonest birds in Michigan. They nest in marshes, but they nest in ditches and pond edges and and uh, open fields and all kinds of places. So I think she's ready to go. We need a volunteer. Put your fingers under there and she'll grip your feet. So if she bites you, it just feels weird. It's a little pokey, it's not gonna hurt you. So I'll give it to you. You just put your two fingers underneath mine. See how my two fingers are, peace sign? Nope, nope, two fingers around the neck, sides of the neck. And then these other fingers. Under here? You got her. Okay, okay. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Some of you guys know blue jays. Yeah. Good. There's they come in my backyard. Okay, this is not a <laughs> is he grabbing your hand? He's grabbing my hand. Why are there a lot is of baseball birding? teams named after Because birds? birds are cool. Right? It looks like it's it's just Blue Jays, it's like Blue Jays, Jays, Cardinals, 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 Indians. What you got in your mouth there? Sorry, I'm distracted. He's got something in his mouth he hasn't swallowed yet. Swallowed, boy? Looks like a seed. The seed in there. So blue jays. Are not entirely blue. They've got all kinds of markings on them. They've got a, a crest, a pointy crest that you see sometimes. White spots in the tail, black and white bands in the wings. Can you like take out the wing like you can it's really, really pretty bird. Does that one hurt when it bites you? Yes. So it's a girl? Well, if you look in your book, and you use in your bird book, and you look at cardinals, it shows you two pictures of cardinals. It shows you a red one or a brown one for male and female. But if you look at blue jay, it'll only show you one picture, which tells you that you can't tell males and females apart. So when you're out there looking, you can't tell them apart. Sometimes when I have them, when I'm holding them in their nesting season, I can tell the blue jays are not nesting yet. So when am I going to enter into my data? Uh, migrating. Unknown. You got it. It's okay. If I have not observed any characteristic to tell me if it's a male or a female, 
I have to say it's unknown. I don't know if it's a male or female. And I can tell this one is in its second calendar year. So when I look at these feathers, these out here, when they're older than two years, they get black bars on them. There's no black bars. So this is in its second calendar year. How big will they eventually get? This big. This big. <laughs> Every bird that can fly is as big as it's ever going to get. Birds grow in the nest, okay? They start in an egg and they don't have feathers, a lot of them, and they get bigger and bigger. But by the time they can fly, they're full grown. They don't grow anymore. Sometimes you'll see a robin on the lawn, it looks smaller, but that's because these tail feathers haven't grown out yet. But that's just feathers. Feathers is like your hair. So if you've got short hair, you've got long hair, you're still the same size. If you stand on a scale, you're gonna weigh the same, whether you got a haircut or you didn't. So the feather, because the feathers don't weigh anything. Well, they do, but if I put a feather on this scale and it weighs to the tenth of a gram, it wouldn't even register. His wing is 125, and its tail is 123. No fat. Blue jays migrate during the day also. A lot of people don't think blue jays migrate at all because you see blue jays in the wintertime and you see blue jays in the summertime. But Michigan is in an area where they overlap. So our winter blue jays might not be the same individuals as our summer blue jays. You can go to a place down um, on Lake Erie, Lake St. Clair Metro Park in September, and you can see 10,000 blue jays flying across from Canada, across the Detroit River, in one day. So, 87.3. Three ounces. <laughs> so, are we up to boy or girl? Boy, this time. Okay. Boy. How about you? Okay, we're going to do this one a little different. Hold your two hands out flat. Nice and flat. Something that you can do with blue jays sometimes is if everybody's quiet and still. Hypnotize the bird a little bit. So blue jays aren't ever upside down. This is the first time this blue jay's probably been upside down in its life, and it has no idea what to do. He's looking at you, isn't he? He looks like a dog. I was thinking, if I just stay still, all these people are going to go away. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> what happens if you catch a bird that's pregnant? Okay, mammals get pregnant. Birds lay eggs, so the technical term is gravid. Gravid? Um, and so you can actually see if they have eggs in them forming, and they'll usually form their entire clutch. Um, and it doesn't look like an egg in there until the last day. The shell forms the last day. Um, so it's, it's just the embryo and then the, the, the white forms, the albumin forms around it. Um, so, we, so we just document that, you know, it has eggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, they, you know, it's not going to lay an egg in my hand, very likely, although that has happened twice um, in my life. 
um, usually it's like, well, okay, we got to get this bird back to its nest. You know, uh, the chickadees are nesting right now. Tufted titmouse is nesting right now. Robins are nesting right now. So we can see them with eggs on them, in them. Uh, but yeah, we just document it. It also is, is helpful to know that if a bird has eggs forming in it, that's why it weighs four grams more than it's supposed to. And it's not any body fat or anything. Is yes. Could anybody like hypnotize a bird and make it like fall asleep, you would say? Well, I didn't hypnotize it really. It's just yeah, that that bird like doesn't know what to do when you turn it upside down. Not all birds work that way. Like chickadees are up in the trees and they're always upside down. So you can never do that with a chickadee. Um, and it's just something fun to do when you're doing this for kids. How many yeah. bird banders are there like licensed in Michigan? Um, yeah, um, well, I have a ma we have master permits, and then I have two people who work under my permit in Kalamazoo. So three of us technically are banding hummingbirds. Uh, songbirds, I don't really know everybody who is. It's probably like 20 or 30. Some of them are associated with colleges and universities, and others are just independent people. You had a question? Can you tell us what birds in the back and what size it is, the blue one? Um, it's the same as we just did. There are some diseases that birds have that you can catch. Um, there's one that's called psittacosis. It's named after parrots. People who had pet parrots were getting something from them. Another one called ornithosis, which is named after birds. Um, some lung diseases from things. Um, and then there are other sensitive things. Uh, my wife is a type 1 diabetic. And when I go home, uh, she helps me wash the bags. But I have to clean out all the poop because any poop that gets into the air, if it gets into her lungs, can do a lot more damage to her because she's a type 1 diabetic than it can for me. And what she does for me is she pours the bleach in the bags because I get uh, tears and runny nose and coughing when I smell bleach. I'm real sensitive to bleach, so we team up and clean the bird bags. So there are some diseases. Um, you know, bird flu is something that usually comes from like chickens and things like that. I think it just wants to get at me no matter what. It wants to go. So this bird's ready to go. Okay, we need to stay quiet. Okay, stop biting. Okay, some of them just really want to bite me a lot. This one's bad set out. <laughs> Blinking. You feel its heartbeat, huh? Does it feel warm? Yeah. So, do you guys know what our t our body temperature is? Ninety-eight point six. Birds are about one hundred and two to one hundred and five. So their body temperature, will they have a higher rate of metabolism? bird bite. <laughs> you are the only one in class that has a bird bite. <laughs> so the first volunteer I need is somebody who's going to carry the bag of bags. Who hasn't done anything yet? You have, have you done something? Did you release a bird? On, okay, bag of bags. Um, and then with... Um, What's your last name? Arsenal. With Mrs. Arsenal, I want you to, um, so you can pick different children to help fill yeah. out that. So who hasn't had a role and wants to write first? Oh, of course. Okay. All right, thank All right. you, Sophia. And then also, Cass, um, we're going to be looking things up. I also have an app, but if we hear something or see something that we want to have a better understanding of, we can look at it in the book or on my app. That so that's right. where that goes. Now, then we need binoculars, so um, don't fiddle with them because they're set up. 
already. So they go like this. The round part is next to your body. Put it over oh, your care, head. Oh, you over your head. These are a, an assist for your eyes. Um, I'm going to tell you what you do and what you don't do. Okay. What do you want to hear first? What you do. What you, what you do. do. Okay. All right. What you do is you look around and you're looking for something that's a little different um, in the trees. And when you see it, then you bring your binoculars up. You never ever stick your binoculars on your face and then start looking. You will only succeed in making yourself sick and dizzy. That's not going to work. So what you do is you look around and then you bring your binoculars, you nail that spot with your eyes and then you bring your binoculars up to that spot. It takes a little practice, but that's the best way to do it. So the spot, if you're trying to tell somebody, um, is a pretend clock. For example, um, see, that, see that tree straight in front of me that's got the twisty? Okay. It's got the tw twisted trunk. Yeah. That's how I would start saying to you where the bird is. The tree with the twisty trunk ahead of me. And then you would pretend that that tree is a clock. I know it's long and skinny, but you kind of draw a circle around it in your mind. And then you say where the bird is if that were a clock. So if I said to you, uh, the twisty tree straight ahead, a bird at um, 3 o'clock, where would the bird be? More like diagonal. Right here. Which side? Going off to the right, yes. And I might say it's close to the center or I might say it's close to the outside. So one thing we don't say, that's what we do say, one thing we don't say is there's a bird over there. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> there's a bird somewhere. But yeah. Might mean that to make noise. Yes. Okay. All right, there's a robin on the path straight over there. Nail it with binoculars up to your eyes. So here's the thing about birds. I've been doing this for quite a long time. And as you saw with Mr. Chartier, there's a male, there's a female. They're young birds, they're old birds. Um, and there are all different kinds of species. So I'm pretty good at male birds. <laughs> because they are the ones that are more colorful, so I can easily identify those. For your purposes, does anybody have bird feeders in their backyard? Oh, good. So we call those um, birds that come to the bird feeders the backyard birds. And once you get an understanding of what they look like and what they sound like, then you can kind of step out of that little box and go to some of the migratory birds, which is what's happening this time of the year. That's why you're here, because we have more birds this time of the year than any other time. So we have five nets that's, that are our responsibility to check. Um, I'm going to show you all about the nets at the first one or the second one. And then after that, you don't touch them because these are very delicate, like hair nets. Is you can have a little feel of the net. This is the only time I'm going to let you do it because um, they snag very easily. And then if there are holes in the net, it's more damaging for the bird. In the net? Yeah, inside the net on the bottom. Oh, yeah, there is. Okay, all right. Um, so, no, it's not a hummingbird. It's a warbler of some sort. Can I see what do So, I would like you to stand at the end. It's so pretty. But it's right. It cannot be a meal. Yeah, who is the bag? Yeah, it's definitely Who is the bag? So this is a kinglet. Let you see it once I get it out of the net. So this has not been banded, this little bird. So did you see Mr. Chartier the way he was holding it? Yeah. It looks as if he's strangling the bird, but it's just feathers. 
<laughs> and there's there's a skinny little neck, so you just hold it gently. And bag of all bags. Actually, that's too big a bag. I want a smaller one. Okay, I just hold that. Using a smaller bag. Because it's a smaller bird. bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just wanted to confine it as much as possible. I think this is. Small Actually, bag. I'm not sure whether I have a really <laughs> small bag. There's no small bags. No small, small bags. Bag. Okay, Mr. Batch and Mr. Chartier luckily had somebody make him new bags. So um, what what we're going to do, stand away from the net, please. I'm going to put this little bird in the bag, uh -huh. and um, then you're going to take turns carrying it. Uh -huh. So there's a certain way to carry it, and I will show you that in a minute once I get them all snugged up here. So... Who hasn't done anything, anything at all? Okay, so how you hold the bird, put your hand out, grab it like that. Hold it in front of you so you can see that you're not gonna bang into a tree. If you hold it behind you or to the side of you, you might bang into somebody or an obstacle, so hold it like that, perfect. All right, so go and stand over there and then I'm gonna have you make a line and you can feel the net. Okay. Okay. So, this, you can see the pockets. And I had to figure out which side the bird came in from because I don't want to take it through the net. I want to take it out of the pocket that the net has made. So, um, what you can do without your gloves on, you can just feel it. It's one time you get a chance to feel it, and then I'm going to ask you forevermore not to touch the nets. Yeah, and make sure you don't have a ring or anything on the hand that you're using to feel the net. So come on over here, friend, so you can see the contrast All between right. the male and the female. So um, I kind of knew that was a female, but how did I know that that was a female? Because it didn't have black. Cause, or Cause red. Cause it didn't have the red, red crown. Yeah, so it's called a ruby crown kinglet, but the female doesn't have the ruby crown. Very confusing. So, <laughs> okay. So All right. Sophia, you can add a little bit more data to number two's kinglet bird. What can you add to it when you write um, kinglet? Add that In the bracket, you can just put an F. Yeah. That'd be good. Great. And Mr. Chartier would be impressed if you hand him a bird and say, oh, this is a female ruby crown kinglet. Okay, let's go. Do you think we leave them up overnight? No. Why? Because they would get cold and The birds would die. What else might happen? They, um, they might freeze. What, what about another animal? What about, uh, eat them. Uh, eat the birds. Yeah, uh, yeah, a hawk could eat a bird in a net, but the deer will come in and get caught, and then we'd ruin these nets. These nets are really expensive. That's about $120 worth of net right there. So what we do is we squish them together at night and twirl them around so it's a black line, and then we put little tape on them. So the deer will go under and it will be safe for everybody, the deer and the birds. And then we let them down in the morning. So we were here at seven o'clock in the morning letting the nets down. Okay, we're gonna go here. Okay, so here's, the, here's what's happening here. Those are two female red-tailed hawks. So who do you think those are? That's right. It's very hard to tell. The only way, and, and I'll tell you how it's hard to tell, because they're, the, the females are a little bit bigger than the males, but um, I think when, when these were originally um, out of veterinarians, they didn't know whether it was a male or female. So one of them, they're both females, is called Bart. Bart, like Bart Simpson? <laughs> and the other's called Sarah. So, <laughs> go figure. Um, and they've got um, some wing injuries, broken bones, and missing parts of their wing. So when a bird has a, a broken bone, can you fix it? No. Nope. Why not? Because you have to, like, because you can't it's, replace it with another. Because it's hollow. Oh, it's hollow. It's like trying to glue a straw together. It may last for a little while, but it's not going to last very long. Okay. So the males are trying to come and visit the females. They're trying to get that date in. Well, they'd like to start a family. <laughs> Skim the, the edge of the meadow to see if there are little things that might be in the edge of the meadow. You're not going to make yourself dizzy by doing it that way, but this is one of the few situations where you can do that. The edge of a pond as well. Oh, I see something over there. I saw a bird flying. You just said over there. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So there's our male hawk. Oh, he's got a bad leg. He's hopping. No, I don't think it's broken, but he's hopping. It's red-tailed. Wow, there's a lot of red-tailed hawks. Whoa. What do they do? And they tear at their flesh. So they actually take their beaks and they tear apart the flesh. Any examples of some animals that the birds would eat? Rabbits. Small mice, rabbits, rats. Small game. Okay, so yep, good. if you can get your binoculars on that hawk, you can see that he's holding his right leg in a funny way. Yeah, I did. did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear that? No, 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 no. Over. Oh. Do you hear that? That's a turkey. Over there. Do you hear that? We're, that very busy, that one. Do you hear that? Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, it's several of them. Okay, we need the book and we need to look up um, the, um, if you would do that, Cass, look up the house wren. I will also do it from here. House wren, W R E N. This is a house wren. Little bird's about this big. It's a little bigger than the female um, ruby. Crown kinglet, a little bigger. It's got a little house ran. Mm -hmm. It still looks a little fatter. <laughs> yeah, and it's got a little tipped up tail. And for a little bird, it has a very, very loud, long song. Why do you think we have these signs at all these bird so banding stations? Yeah, they can't just match with what we have designed. But they want to know what we're doing, so that's the other purpose of it. That's a, a cardinal. I don't know how. Um, Was there metal? Yeah, me too. Yeah, there's a nest up there, but we can't count that. So um, that metal thing, we have um, a wood duck box, and so to prohibit other animals from climbing up the the post to get to that wood duck box, we put that little um, half dome over it. You would do the same thing for bird feeders. It helps to, to deter squirrels. Okay, let's keep going. Edie, do you have a bird? Yes, go for it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, all right. She's gone live. Okay, you guys stay back here. I will tell you what. I will tell you what the bird is, and whoever has the book can look it up. The book. I'm looking it up Stay right back now. here. I don't know what it's called. So stay behind. Wait, where the sign? Right over here, please. Stay behind the desk. Okay, this is a cat bird. A white bird? A gray cat bird. A cat bird? I'm going to see what page it's so, on. You see how she went on the other side of the net? Why don't she go from the left side of the net to the right oh, side of the net? Let me see the other side. Where did the bird come from? Not, not yeah. the if you don't talk, you can hear it sound like a cat. Oh, it has a bracelet on it. Shh. All right, so I'm going to have to go to the bracelet. Yeah. It's a banded gray cat bird. Okay, gray. Does it sound like a cat? Yeah. Here we go. This is blue wobbler. Tree swallow, a blue jay, a blackbird. For some reason, I heard the word catbird. Yeah, I'm not sure That's why. Okay, catbird. Yep. And um, I saw a yellow chickadee just over there a few minutes ago. Okay, great. I saw a yellow chickadee. I saw yellow. So what's really great is while Lucas was doing that, and you all were listening, so Fee was kind of looking at our list to kind of gauge. Um, how our list compares and contrasts. Oh, we uh, also, I also put this down for no apparent reason. I just thought I should mark it on. We also saw um, the nest of what I believe is a blue jay, so I might as 
So I thought I might as well put that. Oh, there. I knew it was That's a really important. Like, so, yeah, yeah, so Madeline and though. Lucas, what do they look thing. like? What are the blue It's like the little um in the they look like a the yes, Lucas. In the water. and me. No, she said yeah, she's anything else you want to add, Madeline? Stop it. Um they it's okay. like we their cups they've been weep and they're in they're mixed in with the cattails and the little and basically all the vegetation growing out of the water. Yep. And so from that discussion with Mr. <laughs> Allen at the beginning, what were some physical characteristics of those birds to help them weave? What did they use? Their, their, their feet their and feet. Feet. Their, feet. their beaks. Yeah. So they're grabbing onto something with their feet and then they're using their beaks to grab that. What types of things would birds use to make their nests? Yes. Twigs. Twigs. What else? They sometimes they would sometimes use mud to like dry on the sticks. Uh huh. Yep. Very good. What else? Leaves. Leaves. Yes. What else? Oh, uh, okay. Anything else you can think of then, Omar? We said sticks, twigs, leaves, mud, dirt, mud. Yep. Soil. Parts of soil. There's even parts of branches and bark that the birds will actually peel off and use. And hummingbirds use the coolest thing. Nectar. They take spider webs. Oh, that'd be clever. And they use that to, for the outside of the, the bird's nest. So even though hummingbirds are really tiny, yeah. Oh, okay. let's check this out. Okay. Now I'm going to help smooth this poor feathers. This poor bird has Nothing. been through a, a lot. A through a lot. This is very stressful. So we're not going to touch it, but you can see it. This is a. This is a cat bird. Did you hear it? Did you, did you hear the noises it makes? Okay. It makes a lot of different sounds, and it, it's it's a mimic bird kind of. It's related to a mockingbird. And but one of the sounds it makes is meow. So every now and then you'll hear. I heard it in the mat. Did you hear it? Yeah. We need to go back. Twenty-nine after. Oh. No. What's wrong with the bird? It's going to go back to be banded. It's already been banded. banded. It's going to be. Oh, well, it's going to be measured and uh, wait, and check the check the fat and all that kind of stuff and find the same out. Same stuff as we saw the first time. Have you? Who hasn't held a bird or done any anything anything anything? You've got the clipboard. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, so hand out. This grab. So maybe that's this it. maybe it this bird has been you. was you banded ten years ago or something. We don't know. Okay. We'll find out. So okay, we'll, so face. we can we can find out. I see it. Here, come over here. It's Can you describe it to me? It's right between the wishbone. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah.